Okay, so welcome to Perception Online. Uh, and thank you very much for uh, taking this class. Um, I just want to start out with a few brief comments um, about um, this, the, the, what we'll be covering in the class. Um, specifically, we're going to be looking at sensory detection. You know, basically how our, you know, bodies and our nervous systems, we have, you know, a, a limited number of specialized sensory detection cells. These are neurons, but they've been, they've evolved, you know, significant specializations that allow them to detect certain forms of energy that's, that are out here in the environment, uh, both the external environment and also uh, it's always very important to emphasize the internal environment. A great deal of our perceptual experience is based upon, you know, specialized sensory receptors that are arrayed throughout our bodies. Uh, that's a pretty salient and important aspect of our, you know, conscious existence. Um, so it, we have limited numbers and limited types of these specialized sensory neurons, and they are detecting certain forms of energy, you know, uh, electromagnetic radiation, for example, within a tiny narrow sliver of the whole electromagnetic spectrum, uh, you know, for, you know, our visual uh, sensory detection. Um, we have, you know, specialized, we're going to see touch receptors, you know, at different levels of the skin that, that bring us different kinds of information. Um, we have, you know, auditory receptors. We're going to learn about these, what are called hair cells deep in the ear. So, but they're limited and they they also tend to exaggerate certain aspects of the energy, even within the range that these neurons are capable of detecting. So, you know, we're going to see, for example, that uh, in the ear, uh, you know, while you have, you know, uh, the ability to detect and, you know, respond to uh, sound waves that are very, very high frequency, what we would perceive as very, very high pitch, all the way down to very low frequency, um, most of your hair cells, most of the cells that are going to be specialized to respond and transduce, convert into neuronal activity, uh, these frequencies are going to be clustered down in the lower frequency ranges that are es essential for understanding human speech because we go up and down. We have lots of different, you know, kinds of, uh, you know, pitch modulation, frequency modulation, and the very high frequencies, even though we have specialized cells that can respond, you know, they're not very discriminative. Everything sounds, you know, basically like a mosquito, right? So um, there is uh, a difference between sensory detection, you know, the specialized receptors that are going to be arrayed around, you know, your body for the detection of certain forms of energy in the environment and your perceptual experience uh, of, of, you know, those aspects of our environment. Um, so, uh, the, uh, what you see <laughs> is not necessarily what you perceive, you know, in terms of vision is not the same thing, uh, as what's arriving, you know, basically at your eyes, at, you know, on these specialized sensory cells known as photoreceptors. And I want us just to, to start off this class by sort of just thinking about that relationship. You know, there's a world out here, presumably, um, and in here, and you have a limited number of specialized sensory cells, you know, neurons, that can detect very selectively certain aspects uh, of these environments and convert, you know, that detection of, you know, one form of energy into another form, into how neurons communicate which is, we're going to see electrochemical. They're going to send electrical messages, and, they're, and you know, they're going to meet at gaps between, you know, one neuron and the next, known as a synapse, uh, where there's going to be a chemical release, and it can stimulate the next cell. But basically, you're detecting all of these energies and converting them into, you know, electrical chemical activity along specific networks in the brain. Um, and, you know, these questions about, what is perception? You know, what does it mean to perceive? Why am I conscious of what I see and hear? Is it essential that we are conscious and perceive every aspect of the environment that we actually detect? You know, why is detection limited? 
I mean, all these questions have been asked by, you know, many thinkers and philosophers, you know, throughout um, history. And uh, many, you know, Western textbooks emphasize the Greeks and the European, you know, the Europeans um, in terms of their writings and um, interests um, in these in these big questions. You know, really, what is real and, you know, is what you perceive accurate? Um, but we want to also emphasize in this class how these are essential human questions that many people around the globe have asked. Um, and so we're going to bring in uh, philosophers and thinkers and, and people who've written and discussed these ideas, you know, going way back, you know, beyond the Greeks and also far beyond, you know, Europe um, in terms of, uh, you know, the scope and the contributions to our understanding, uh, you know, of the, of the relationship between sensation you know, of details and, you know, selective details of reality and your perception, you know, of yourself and your place in the world.